Hi everyone, it's Daniel here. Today I'll be reviewing Frida's album from 1982, which is Something's Going On. This is her first English um, album. She did two other albums beforehand in Swedish, produced by Bjorn and Benny from, of course, Ado, but I'm not listening to them there in fully Swedish, so I won't understand a word because I don't speak the language, but this is her first um, English solo album, and um, yeah, it's really good. I love the front cover. I love the, like, the colour of this album. It's very pinky. I like it. So here's the front, the spine, nothing interesting. And the back cover, which, yeah, pretty cool. I like it. I um, think that's a signature right there. Um, got lots of um, <laughs> lots of thank you messages to everyone who worked on this album. And um, yeah, I bet you can't guess who produced this album. I'll tell you in a minute. So cool. Um, the first track, Tell Me It's Over. Great track, quite short, two, two minutes and 50 seconds, but Great way to open open the album, written by Stephen Bishop. I've heard that name before. I <laughs> See uh, Red, written by Jim Rafferty. Uh, another great song. Quite funky, quite mysterious. I, I like it. Um, this album, yeah, there's a lot of pop in it. Yeah, there's one song that's like quite hard rock, but quite synthy as well. Which, yeah. Um, we'll talk about that very soon. I Got Something, written by Thomas Lennon. Another great song. Strangers, quite a, quite a, quite a spooky song. I like that one. Uh, Jan Janie Bradbury and Dave Morris wrote that song both together. So yeah, to turn the stone, great way to end off side one. Written by Peter Bella and Giorgio Moroder. You've heard that name, of course. Side two starts off with um, the title track. I know there's something going on, which is a great track. The drums are amazing, and yeah, it's quite rocky, and I love that track. It's amazing. Just a great way to, to open. Um, side two. Uh, the Renedy, I think that's how you say it, uh, by Dorothy Parker and Per Gessel. Uh, another great song, I like that one. And um, yeah, a um, few of the songs off this album do kind of remind you a bit of Abel. But yeah, I mean, she basically just wanted to move on from um, the other three and just do this. By the way, this album came out in 1982. Um, it was recorded just before the band broke up. They were still together, but they were kind of tearing apart. Yeah, they released two more songs and then, yeah, that's it. But luckily Frida did this album, so that's nice. Next track is Baby Don't You Cry No More. Great track, love that one. Ron Argent from The Zombies wrote that song. Uh, we have The Way You Do, written by Brian May... No, not Brian. Not Brian May. Brian Ferry from um, Roxy Music. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've actually been listening to Queen lately, so that's probably why. But yeah, Brian Ferry from Roxy Music wrote that song. If you know Roxy Music, that's great. Um, then we have You Know What I Mean, originally by Phil Collins on his album Face Value. Yeah, you've cracked it. <laughs> Phil Collins produced this album, played drums and some backup vocals. Yeah, you can clearly hear the gated reverb sound and some of these songs kind of remind you of like Phil Collins, you know. You know, his stuff from like Face Value and Hello Must Be Going, which came out the same year. Uh, this album came out after Abacab and just before Hello Must Be Going. Very nice. So um, instead of a piano, grand piano, we've got a harp played by Scala Kanga. I think that's how you say her name. But yeah, she plays the song beautifully. We've got a beautiful string arrangement. I think the Phil Collins version is fantastic, but Frida's version, she, she sings it just as well as Phil did. And then the final track to end off the album, we have a beautiful duet with uh, Frida and Phil, Here We'll Stay. Great song, love it. Um, there's actually some behind the scenes footage of like how this album came together and it's brilliant trust me you need to watch it <laughs> everyone in the um in the um in the recording room were all like tapping their feet and stuff when they were playing the track back and it's just awesome love it the horns are great just beautiful instrumentation just brilliant album i love this one definitely did, didn't disappoint me and yeah just love all the songs personnel list we have pete robinson on keyboards yeah, he plays on the whole album, despite only playing on two Phil Collins songs, which both covers, you know, Behind the Lines, um, which was originally by Genesis. He played the Prophet in that song, and then he played the piano and glockenspiel in You Can't Hurry Love, which was originally by The Supremes, of Hello and Whisper Going. We have Daryl Sturmer on guitars, of course. Daryl Sturmer's amazing. Uh, we have Mo Foster on bass, who sadly passed away last year. Rest in peace, Mo. Yeah, his bass playing's great. You know, we've got a bit of um, jazz bass, fretless. Um, very cool, like that. 
Strangely enough, he also played with only two Phil Collins songs, uh, It Don't Matter To Me and uh, Three D's Walls, which were both off Hello Must Be Going, the first two tracks on side two. Uh, the drums, backing vocals and percussion were obviously done by Phil Collins. His, his, his role on this album is fantastic, I love it. Uh, the Phoenix Horns, we have Don Marek on saxophones, Michael Harris and Ramley, Michael Davis on trumpets, and Lewis Satterfield on trombone, of course. Phoenix Horns, fantastic. Uh, horns arranged by Peter Robinson, and he also arranged um, the strings on this album. The strings were um, conducted by Martin Ford, and the leader was Gavin Wright. Also um, performed on um, Hello I Must Be Going. Uh, the harp was played by Scala Kanga. Uh, digitally recorded at Polar Music Studios in Stockholm, Sweden, and the strings and harp were recorded at Air Studios London. The engineer was Hugh Padgham. And um, got many thanks, many thanks messages. And then, um, yeah, produced by Phil Collins, I think. Great job, I think he did a great job, fantastic. Epic, Re Epic Records um, produced, um, distributed this album in the UK. I don't know which record label it was in other countries, but you know. Uh, here's the sleeve, very nice. Uh, we've got a picture of Annie Freed, short red hair. That's just how she um, looked in the like the early 80s. Very nice. At the back we have uh, lyrics, very nice. I like that. Um, I don't like sleeves that are just like boring, uh, literally just like blank. This has like all the lyrics to the songs, which is really nice. Also, there's a solo version here, we'll stay. Not keen, on, not keen on it one bit. It's just weird without Phil and Frida just singing his parts. It's just, yeah, very strange. And yeah, it just feels out of place to me. So I'm not keen on the solo version, but I love the duet. Yeah, it's my favourite song, but definitely listen to the duet version with Frida and Phil. It's much better, and yeah, just, yeah, it's brilliant. So here's side one, and here is side two. Very nice. I played this album, of course, or else why am I reviewing it? Just, just, a, just an amazing album. If you love pop and a bit of hard rock, then this is definitely for you. Yeah, Frida moving on from um, ABBA. I'm proud of her, to be fair, yeah. Uh, I got this second hand from the record shop I usually go to for £4. Very good price, and yeah, just, just an amazing album. Love it. So yeah, thank you for watching, everyone. This has been my review of Frida's album, Something's Going On, her first fully English solo album. And uh, yeah, let me, know, let me know what you think of this album. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Please do let me know. So uh, yeah. Um, this album definitely sounds, some of it sounds like ABBA, some of it sounds like Phil Collins, especially in them, especially in them gated reverb drums and those Daryl Sturman guitars. Um, interestingly enough, her next album is, um, um, was produced by Steve Lillywhite, who, um, produced Peter Gabriel's early stuff, and, um, guess who's got on bass? Yep, yeah, Tony Levin. Yes, yeah, so, this album sounds like Phil Collins, her next album will probably sound like Peter Gabriel, so. Cool. Definitely listen to uh, definitely give that album a listen and uh yeah, thanks once again everyone and I shall see you next time. Take it easy and I shall see you in a bit. Yeah, peace.